We are moving into broadcast mode. We'll get started in just a minute, everybody. Just want to have uh, a couple of more seconds for people to get on. Um, and then we will get started. So sit tight. All right, looking good. Okay. Welcome everybody to the um, this month's in this unusual times, uh, this month's webinar for busy lawyers. Um, I would love to introduce you to Heather Buchelmeis, who is an immigration and injury attorney. She's licensed in Kentucky. In addition to her law practice, Helen is the founder and CEO of Eastroy, E-C-E-R-O-I dot com, a consulting company globally assisting lawyers and law firms with their wellness, marketing, team training, and management plans. As an adjunct faculty, she teaches attorney marketing and law project, project management courses at NKU Chase College of Law and speaks on these topics at local, regional, and national conferences. Helen is going to have an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about herself in just a minute when I turn it over to her, but I want to let you know that we will have time at the end of Helen's presentation to answer all of your questions. Um, please write them into the chat box as they occur to you, and I promise you that after her presentation, we will, um, I will tell her all the questions. She will have plenty of time to answer them. Uh, so without further ado, Helen, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you so much, Susan, and thank you to everyone who showed up today. Um, what an interesting time to be presenting on this topic, and what an interesting time to be virtually meeting with you all. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, um, I met um, several attorneys from the Massachusetts Bar through the ABA Tech Show. For the last three years, I've been in contact, in communication, and wonderful relationships with um, Heidi Alexander. Um, Susan, Rachel, and so many brilliant minds over there. Um, I am in Kentucky and Ohio. Um, I practice immigration so I can pretty much go anywhere I'd like. Um, I usually stay in Kentucky and Ohio, uh, but if I can be of assistance to you in any manner, I'd be very happy to. Um, so as we go through, please write down my contact information. Um, you never know what I may be able to do for you and uh, perhaps sending you referrals. Um, if you or anyone on your team needs an accountability partner or a coach for your firm, for your team, uh, I'd be very happy to do so. And if I I can offer any support to you, I'd be very happy um, to support you in whatever you'd like to do in life. Um, Susan gave a really good introduction, um, and I don't want to spend so much of t uh, time, our time today, to talk about myself, but I do want to mention hiking lawyers. Um, I may make a reference to hiking lawyers even more during my presentation today, but it's a group um, I started in 2008. Um, when we first started it, it was a funny, um, ironic thing. Hiking, lawyers, um, is that a thing? In fact, when we first had our first hike, um, I only had one couple who came and joined me. Um, but I stuck with it because I truly believe that hiking has made me a very happy, very successful, very balanced individual. And I cannot stop talking about it. So um, if you're on Facebook, please join the group. It's called Hiking Lawyers and friends, hiking lawyers and friends, and um, we'll be very happy to have you. We have over 1,400 members now. Over the years, the idea has caught on, and especially these days, people are really getting out outdoors, enjoying their lives, and truly enjoying nature out there, and it's helping all of us. Um, the need for wellness. It's nothing new. Um, it has been as old as our profession, perhaps. Um, I was reading uh, several books recently uh, for another project I am um, managing on um, Abraham Lincoln. Um, apparently, uh, as successful as he was, he was known for his depression and the issues and uh, mood swings that he used to have. And I was reading another book and he talked about Thomas Jefferson and his mood swings and his need for wellness. And so although we'd like to think that the challenges of our profession today has necessitated wellness plans, apparently it's nothing new. 
Um, today's presentation is based on uh, my personal experiences. It's also based on my coaching of law firms and my experiences with a lot of lawyers and law firm teams. Um, but when it comes to talking about wellness, I truly believe that there is no expert other than you about your wellness. We each come from different backgrounds. We have different families, cultural backgrounds, um, different health systems, different bodies. Um, and as, as I always say, um, we have different fingerprints for a reason. And so for your wellness plan, it will have to be your desire, your plan, your demand for your life to be better, to be improved, to be happier, more successful, more profitable. What I can or any coach can do is give you tools and hopefully today's program is going to be giving you some tools in a fun way. Um, anything I talk about in terms of body or medicine or food, obviously I'm not a medical professional. Please run it by your doctor, uh, your healthcare professional before you do it. And um, I did present this presentation in a very similar manner at the ABA Tech Show. So I'd like to give them um, a shout out from here. Heidi Alexander actually was the creator, one of the amazing creators of that program. Um, um, I presented this program with Brooke Moore, and um, I'd like to give her some credit about some of the ideas that I may be mentioning that we together presented there. I have very little time and I tend to speak a lot and uh, much longer than my time allows. So I'd like to give you the wellness program um, or the plan very quickly. And we'll go through these and I'll try to give you more details. But basically the 10 point wellness program is number one, find you. Number two, be you. Number three, reign in the expectations. Number four, generate happiness and wellness your, via your law practice. Number five, be intentional. Number six, be flexible, forgiving, and constantly adjust. Seven, build yourself daily. Eight, eat like you love yourself. Nine, drink like you love yourself. And finally, 10, move like you love yourself. Finding yourself. Um, when you look around yourself, we may think that we live a very unique life, unique to ourselves. Uh, but once you dig deep and analyze your own actions, your own words, your own decisions, you may realize that what we learn from the very beginning as a child shapes us into a person that is more in line with the expectations of others. Our family, our culture around us growing up teaches things, what to believe, what to see, what to hear, what to desire, and what to dream for our lives. There's social truth, there's peer pressure, and it's very important for us to take the time, especially these days when we are forced to take this break, to sit down and think about who we are. Adjectives are helpful, expectations are helpful, but the question is very important. If I had nobody else around me, if I had no family, no friends, no job, no colleagues, no consideration for affording a life, no consideration for others' expectations upon me, what would I want to do? What would make me happy? When I go outside every day, what brings me joy? What makes me proud? These adjectives are very helpful in exercises that helps you find who you are. Um, I have a recommendation. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. And some of you, most of you may have heard or read this book. It's called The Four Agreements. Um, my, personal my personal journey changed because of this book. Um, once I started reading it, I realized that I was trying so hard to meet the expectations of others and defining these expectations as of my own. Um, this book has four very basic um, uh, principles that I can tell you in a very short amount of time. Number one, be impeccable with your word. The words that we utter, we speak on a ba daily basis, they actually change our reality. Don't take anything personally. What others say, do, what others decide have nothing to do with us. It is their reality, it's their own dreams, it's their own teachings, and it's their own life. Don't make assumptions. Even when you think a certain truth comes with an assumption, always question it about yourself or others. 
and always you always do your best if you do your best then regret does not come into picture as much as we think it does once you find out who you are what you want what you you want your life to look like be you and another question that is good to ask is do you have to go around every day acting do you feel like the person that is around you in the mirror at the office is not really who you are if you are finding out who you are then insist on becoming yourself we talked about the fingerprint earlier our fingerprints are very different in my belief system our fingerprints are similar to our personalities nobody else in this world can bring to the table what we can individually but for us to do that we need to be aware of our own truth and build our lives around it once you find out who you are, build your law practice, build your team, nurture and empower your team, and make sure that your law practice is a reflection of who you are and who you want to be. Build a purposeful team. Make sure you go in, dig deep, and see what makes them tick. What are their fingerprints? How can you empower them to be the best that they can be so that all of you as a team can be happy, can be well, but also can be profitable? Build your own office. Part of wellness is being happy where you are. What does that space look like? Um, I'm sharing here two pictures. The uh, picture by the beach is actually my hometown, which is Izmir, Turkey. It's the Aegean coast of Turkey. That's where I grew up. Um, and I try to take a couple of files and go there and that's my office at times. And if I have to be at the office going through tons of medical documents because I'm handling a medical malpractice case, well, I want to make sure that being there makes me happy. What type of case is it? What type of client is it? Am I dealing with a grateful client? If not, have I set the boundaries for that to happen? Did I set office policy and procedures to make sure that my team knows what they need to be doing? Did I set the boundaries with my client to make sure that my client knows what I am doing for him or her? Did I set the boundaries where I create that gratitude with the client? Or is it a client who's never going to be grateful for what I do, however I do it? Then do I need to have that client as my client? Am I so desperate for that money to come in from someone who's going to suck the life out of me? So if you look at some of the pictures, um, I'm not sharing these to brag, but I do uh, believe that anytime you have surroundings that make you happy, the work that you do truly reflects that environment. What about your practice area? Are you happy with your practice area? Um, recently, I met a friend of mine who I hadn't really talked to much. Um, and I asked him about what he did with his law practice. We had a light lunch and uh, we just talked about what his life story was. And it was incredible. Um, my friend Cal is an attorney in Kentucky. He is now retired. He's actually a Harvard grad. <laughs> Um, and I know you are very proud of your state and uh, my son is a medical student. He wants to end up in Boston sometime too. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But um, Cal told me that he was a Harvard graduate. And knowing a little bit about his story, I asked him, I said, I know that you, you retired from legal aid. Um, and you know, when someone says that I graduated from Harvard, uh, my mind automatically goes into thinking, well, you could have done pretty much anything you wanted with your life as, an, as a lawyer if you went to Harvard. Um, and he, he told me his story and I wrote about it. If you are my Facebook friend or LinkedIn friend, you'll see that interview there. Um, and he said, that is not necessarily true. When I started interviewing with the big law firms, they were very intrigued anytime they would see Harvard on my resume. I got tons and tons of interviews. Um, however, as soon as I would go in and start talking, they would see that I was so passionate about helping the poor. I would always talk about resources, how I would make things happen. And I, I talked about business development, but not by people who would bring them in a lot of money. These people needed my help more than they could pay me. Um, and he said that at the end of these interviews for a couple of months, he realized something that he was denying himself 
if I am denying that I want to be a part of an organization that helps poor people, then I'm denying my, my own truth to myself. How can I be happy? How can I, how can I be well going into a large law firm serving corporate clients who um, I don't really believe in personally? Nothing wrong with them. I just don't believe in them. Um, and um, he said, as soon as he made the decision that his place was a legal aid, it was a very easy transition. He got the job and he served all his life doing what he absolutely loved, helping people who don't have the resources. And the financial part of it, he said, if you stick with it over time, uh, you get promotions, you get raises. And when he retired, he was at the level that was very comfortable for his life. And he, was, he led a very happy life as an attorney because he knew exactly what made him happy in terms of type of cases, type of clients and type of law practice that he had. Rain in, in the expectations. Um, again, I have very limited time. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm very happy to talk with you in detail about these things. But it's very important to ask for you, um, what are the expectations? What does it mean for me to be a lawyer? For myself, for my spouse, for my family, for my clients, and for my social circle. Uh, interestingly, the media does not help us to form these expectations and realities in our minds um, with the picture that they create. Um, you know, as attorneys, we should be aggressive, we should be ambitious, we should at times be even loud and disrespectful. That's just how lawyers do things, the bulldogs and the tigers, um, that's what we're expected to do the judges and the court system or the opposing counsel, they may expect us to be certain personality if we are lawyers. Our families, if I am marrying my fiance who thinks that lawyers should be rich in terms of material wealth, well, that's not exactly a defining factor for me. Profit is very important and I I absolutely did not invest into law school not to have profit, but I want profit that feels good. Other expectations, society, what should we be driving? What should we be drinking? What are the perceived solutions? If you look at the media, uh, perceived solutions usually have something to do with alcohol, whether you like it or not. Um, the, they definitely put on some expectations and truths and try to see if they actually stick. And they do stick, unfortunately. Number four, generate wellness and happiness through your law practice. Um, I usually share this with my friends, but I also daily apply the three S's of happiness in my law practice and in my life at home too. Uh, everyone needs three S's to be happy. Something to do. Some, someone to love and something to look forward to. So every day when you go to your law practice or your office, think about it, your team, what do they want? Do they have something to do? Is it clear for them? Is it within their uh, education and training to do it? Do they have someone they love? And I'm not suggesting any interpersonal <laughs> relationships or anything like that. Someone to love has something to do with someone to trust right, at the office if you're having communication issues? Does your team have someone to go to, a coach or an outside consultant like me, or someone they trust within the office? They can go and talk to and find creative ideas. Someone who's not going to engage in gossip, but going to give good advice to your team members to become the best version of themselves. And something to look forward to. If your team, if your family, if your kids, if your spouse has something to look forward to, it's going to keep them hopeful, joyful. It's going to keep them very adjusted into their moment, their now. And this can be a um, bonus vacation. At the end of the first quarter, if we hit these numbers as profit, we're all going to Italy for a vacation together, all expenses paid at home. Today, you have to do some work and um, your kids, they love going outside chasing rabbits and finding little colored eggs in nature. Well, the promise is I need to do this work for three hours. At five o'clock, we're all going to, uh, for a picnic. We're going to get, hike, get a hike in and we're going to have fun. Well, they have something to do. Hopefully you've given something for them to keep busy. They definitely have someone to love, you and your family, and they have a plan to look forward to. 
um, training sessions, regular um, empowering sessions for your team, very important. I have a lot of ideas about this and I have seen these to have made a difference for law firms. So please reach out if you're interested. Um, always keep in mind, regardless of what is happening in your life, it can be that the season is different. The season requires you to, um, to be a different person, right? And I'm sorry, I keep doing this to my screen. Hopefully it's not going to. All right. Um, the seasons of life are very important. Um, for your wellness, it's important to know your physical limitations. What medication should you be taking? What activities should you be doing? How much water, how much food? Um, but even beyond that, personal seasons of life. There's a season when you may be thinking about having children or not. I mean, you may be thinking about taking that really good vacation worldwide, just setting everything aside. You may be thinking this is the season of life for me to be working every single day until I get to where I want to be. Um, if you're going through divorce or a personal hardship, that's a different season of life. You cannot expect yourself to perform the same regardless of the seasons of life. Always pay attention to the seasons of that life that you have. Be intentional and purposeful. Have a plan. Have a plan for your happiness, wellness, and for your profits. All of this has to be something that feels good. Um, when we talk about being intentional and purposeful, um, I often help law firms with their marketing plans. And it's very interesting to see, for example, if we're doing a video conference or a video um, marketing session, um, I ask them for their story. And I say, what sets you apart from other lawyers? Interestingly, most lawyers don't know. They just say, I'm really good at what I do. I win. I do these type of cases. I'm a lawyer. I will get them the compensation they deserve. I can't find a story that focuses on this person and their fingerprints and their story. And it's very important to find that story, even for your marketing. Purposeful marketing will set you apart. And it's very, very important. Once you find the ideas for your purposeful marketing and turn that into a marketing plan. Um, there was a study by the ABA not long ago and it found that around 70% of the law firms, um, I could be wrong about the number here, but close to 70% of the law firms basically don't have a marketing plan. They simply throw money at a video company that they meet at a conference or they meet an SEO online marketing company and they just throw money. And when the plan doesn't go as um, anticipated, that creates even further personal conflict, even further lack of wellness for the attorney, for the law firm, and unfortunately for the vendor too. If you don't know what you want, if you don't know what the purpose of that purchase is, it is going to fail. And make your money speak. It's another part of the purposeful marketing. If you are someone who believes that we should be working on improving women's rights in this country, then it's very important for you to look to see what vendors you could be hiring so that you actually provide some support to, for that purpose. Uh, if you need any templates, I'm happy to provide those to you. Uh, again, I need to uh, uh, move quickly here. Mistakes will happen to err is human. And uh, number six is be flexible, be forgiving, and adjust plans constantly. Um, and I'm happy to go into detail in details um, some other time. Number seven, build yourself daily. Daily routine is in extremely important. Any plan or goal you have is not going to happen un until and unless you're working towards it every single day. Um, I have put some ideas in here that may make a difference for you, but what your day looks like is completely up to you. Um, waking up early, it's a huge game changer. Physical exercise, meditations, affirmations, and visualization. Um, journaling is extremely important because it allows you to get to know yourself. Uh, journaling has allowed me to understand myself that in the spring, I'm extremely energetic. Um, come winter or the gray months, I am not. Um, 
around certain times uh, in a month, I am extremely aggressive and, and I use those times for negotiation or opposing counsel communications. And sometimes I'm, I'm extremely creative, but very introverted. And I use that time to come up with strategy and planning. Definitely look into journaling. Um, and um, number eight, drink like you love yourself. Um, recently, I worked with a law firm where um, the managing partner was going through a lot of health issues. She could not sleep. Um, she was constantly aggressive and jittery. And um, I first started thinking that we definitely need her to get checked by a medical professional. And that's what we did. And not much came out of it. Tests and doctor visits. And um, one day I spent the entire day with her because we were writing her marketing plan. I noticed she drank zero water. She was drinking Coke, she was drinking coffee, and in the evening when we went out, she was drinking wine heavily. Um, there was absolutely no water. And I, just as a very simple suggestion, I just asked her if she could start drinking more water and start journaling it. And it was incredible. Apparently, this is this may be an exception. Perhaps not every per person suffers from not drinking water, um, but her problems started going away. Her condition started improving, and it was incredible that no one, even herself, she did not catch that she was extremely dehydrated. There are really good apps that you can put for free on your phone. One is Water Drink Reminder. And um, another one that I really like is called Streak. And actually, Heidi Alexander had suggested that to us. I still have that on my phone. But I still have Water Drink Reminder on my phone, too. The more, the merrier. Again, talk to your doctor about this. Hopefully, more hydration is also good for you. Uh, building yourself with good food. Um, Everybody has different opinions about food. Coming from Izmir, um, the Mediterranean region, I am naturally inclined to eat more fruit, seeds, um, uh, lots of fruit and vegetables. Um, but you know, whatever your diet is, make sure that you journal and see how that makes you feel. Um, my fiance is wheat intolerant. Because of him, I started eating less wheat, and I can I can tell that it makes a difference um, around. And the allergy season, I'm not as affected, um, and it has definitely improved my overall health. Number 10, move like you love yourself. And that's where we come to hiking and the benefits of hiking, which I can talk about all day long. Um, but if you're not a big hiker, start slow. Uh, when I first started in the US, because I wasn't familiar with the places to go and things to do, I started with one mile a day just around the neighborhood to see the season's flowers, to get to know the neighborhood, to see the parks. And definitely have an app on your phone. I use Endomondo, um, E-N-D-O-M-O-N-D-O, -O -N -D -O, Endomondo. Um, there are several different um, free apps out there for um, hiking or similar outdoor activities. It measures the time. It measures your pace, um, type of activity. You can change it to biking, hiking, climbing, whatever you are doing. It, but if you're measuring, it's more likely that you will do it again. And it can also send you reminders on your phone saying it's time to move. And also when we talk about hiking, hiking lawyers or the group, it's not just hiking. It's the love for the outdoors. It's poetry, it's art, it's photography. When you go out there and find an incredible blooming tree, um, it brings joy to our lives and it changes our mood for the better and if you are into more um, more aggressive uh, more strenuous hiking I absolutely recommend that you turn that into a, a regular thing um, my personal goal was about two years ago 500 miles per year and I had to do my calculations to, to see how many miles I would have to do per day or per week and um, Last year, I decided that I was going to uh, be challenged by my friends who said they were doing 2019 miles. And this year, we said, okay, we're going to do 2020 miles. Uh, although I may not get there this year, believe it or not, um, my goal, uh, my accomplished goal last year was 500 miles and this year I'm already at 300 miles because I'm challenging myself and the 
the impact of I, of hiking on my life, on my professional success and joy that I get out of life. It, it's just incredible. Join our group um, on LinkedIn. I have also written articles about how hiking heals and improves the lawyer brain. Um, there's just so much to talk about, but I don't want to keep you even busier. Having a pet helps with walks and getting outside. We learn a lot from our pets. They definitely know how to live their lives. Um, please connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, please write down my phone, take down my email. If I can help you in any way, I would be very happy to, because I truly believe that human connection is one of the joys of life that we tend to forget at times. Thanks so much for your time. If you have any questions, I will be looking here to see um, if I can answer any questions for you. Helen, thank you so much. What a terrific presentation. Um, these are such great tips. We have a question for you. Um, some lawyers who are not working for themselves and have very little control over their lives, like you know those who are working at a busy law firm or for the government, um, do you have any specific tips or suggestions for those people? Absolutely. Um, and um, not to be insensitive to those situations. Now I have my own firm, uh, but I did work for other law firms. And at times I worked for firms where we couldn't leave almost all day. And that was the fact, not only during the week, but also on the weekends. Um, and I'm definitely keeping my friends who are still in those situations in mind. Um, number one, if you can build your own empire. Um, as lawyers, perhaps we were not in the past trained as to how to create our own law firms, how to start thinking about how we can take our skill set and turn that into profit, joy, and happiness in life. If you're not there yet, it's absolutely perfectly fine because you are getting there, you're learning, and perhaps you're enjoying your career not to have your own law firm. And that's perfectly acceptable too. Um, there are things that you can do at the office. One of them is um, I, I try to do daily or every other day um, chair yoga meditation and chair yoga. Uh, you may not be able to leave your office, but there are so many things that can be done. For example, having the hydration. Uh, I showed you my mason jar that I like in Kentucky. I guess I became a Kentucky in here. Um, and I fill that with really good water, high pH, and I also add some fruit to make sure that I am drinking enough water. Lack of hydration can lead to being aggressive and lack of sleep and uh, just, just not a good situation. In terms of movement, we cannot be sitting for more than 30, 30 minutes at a time. Get a standing desk. And I know they're pricey. So what I have done is I actually found a hospital bed that adjusts up and down. And I brought that to my office, did a couple of adjustments. And right now I'm standing, presenting to you from one of those that, you know, move and I can stand as long as I want. I can adjust it and I can sit down. Um, another office tip, um, there's so many uh, stretch exercises that change your mood. For example, fear is known to live um, in our limbs, meaning um, between legs, between arms and the body. That's where fear and anxiety lives. And if you know the right exercises to do at the office with deep breathing exercises, those are very, very helpful. Another thing that I used to do when I was in that environment was um, set aside some time to go and talk to a person that I love and trust. Remember some, some, someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. And we would set a plan and we would say, yes, there's a trial coming out. We can't go anywhere, but let's meet tomorrow after work, however late it is, and go for a quick jog or run. Um, let's go do yoga tomorrow at the office, the empty office in the back. So connecting with others, making sure you have proper hydration, and making sure that you're connecting with people that you love, even if it's via video, is very helpful. And I find that not sitting long amounts of time, it's really helpful too. And again, I have a long list of things that I can suggest. Um, please connect with me so that I'm not taking everybody's time here. Oh, no worries about that. We have another question for you. Sure. Um, so the, we're not doing random acts of marketing. How do we set realistic goals for video production for blogging? Uh, 
It's a very good question. Um, it depends on what you want. It depends on what type of law practice you have. And the good news is the cost of those things have really decreased with the advent of iPhones, smartphones, uh, the video. If you get a ring light, you can actually produce your own videos. The realistic expectations will depend on your end goal. Um, what is the number on top of your profit planning, right? Do you want to be making, I'm just making this up, um, $300,000 a year? Or do you want to be a million dollar firm within the next five years? It depends on what you want to do, but it always, always starts with finding out who you are as a lawyer, who you are as a person. And I'll, I'll give you an example just to um, make it more visible um, in our minds. When I first started doing my own law practice, I questioned my values. Why am I doing this? Who is the ideal client for me? What type of cases do, you, do I believe that I can find joy in? Is it always going to be pink and you know roses? No, but what kind of challenges can I take on, learn from, and still be joyful in my practice? And I looked into myself and I found that I'm an immigrant myself. I love meeting other people with different cultures, different languages, different cuisines and cooking and connections, um, social events. And I, I decided that I, my fingerprint is I am an immigrant myself and I love helping other immigrants find their American dream. As soon as I found that simple explanation, simple expression of who I was as an attorney, everything became so much easier. I could create a Facebook page that has been very successful in connecting me with my clients. I could get in front of any camera, iPhone, whatever it may be, and talk about why I do what I do. It became very easy. I could find an SEO company to help me because I knew exactly who I wanted to reach out to. Um, these are very, again, creating marketing plans take weeks and weeks of time. But the advice I can give you in terms of setting realistic expectations is find, find out who you are, find out what your ideal case client and uh, uh, law practice is, and set your goals. Um, if you were making $100,000 last year, is it realistic to set a goal to make five, $5 million for the next five years? Maybe, I don't know. We need to look at what you want to do, how you want to do it. But in general, once you find out who you are, what kind of client you want, what kind of case you want, then it becomes so much easier to find the tools to get there. So we have a, um, a thought from one of the attendees and I'd love to get um, your ideas about this. Yes. Um, the, if you have a hard time finding the time to fully journal every day, you can use mood trackers. Um, this attendee uses Dalio, D-A-Y-L-I-O, which allows one to see day to day and month to month when you have energy and when you don't which this person finds extremely health, helpful for their mental health. What do you think? Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Any tool that we can actually share and um, utilize in understanding our own lives, it's incredibly important. And I'm so happy someone brought this up because I kind of quickly glanced over that topic. But journaling, it has changed my life so much better. I use it for my own clients when they come to me for coaching of their uh, marketing teams or their law firm teams or for, your, for themselves. We start with journaling because I have no idea. They have no idea who they are, what type of ups and downs their own lives have without journaling. Um, I have them journal water intake. Um, what type of food you eat, and then we look at their moods the next day. If you consumed a lot of sugar today, which is fine, I love cake, <laughs> unfortunately, um, I look at my behavior the next day or the next day. Uh, am I more um, energetic than the same day and then less energetic the next? If I consume more fruit today, how am I feeling? And sometimes we don't really connect these things until we look at the entire month, either on day or other mood trackers or other journaling tools. So excellent. Thank you so much for bringing it up. I'm a cheapo when it comes to these things. <laughs> so I either try to find free apps or create an Excel spreadsheet and just write my journal there. But anytime I can find an organized, uh, inexpensive app that can actually 
make that intake much easier. It's so much better. So thank you so much for sharing. Helen, I have one more question. It's really good. So hopefully you'll have the time to give us some thoughts on this. So this person writes that a lot of these suggestions mean that some will work and some will fail and you just have to try to see what's right for you. However, the legal community is not very tolerant to any type of failure. So the question is, how can you overcome societal pressures to be successful? Excellent. Very good question. Um, I would like to ask this person, but everybody else too, um, if you have not read the book, The Four Agreements, that is exactly the type of book you need to be reading. Um, that's how I, I was able to overcome the expectations of the legal profession to focus on who I am and who what I want to do with my own life. And if you actually look into this book, um, this book is very, very thin. It's a you know, square book. Uh, if you start reading and practicing this book, and I apologize, there's uh, the yard work outside. Um, this book makes us realize where these expectations are coming from and how not to take these personally, how to respond in a way that makes us proud and happy and joyful about our own response responses, how not to react, but to respond professionally. And another really important part is to have an accountability partner, someone who's a mentor, perhaps someone who is a lawyer, or perhaps someone who is not a lawyer, just a life coach, a business coach, or an idea coach, wellness coach, whatever you may be able to find. Um, and see if you can work with this person, because believe it or not, you know, we may not be able to see our own patterns, but someone who works with us um, is usually able to. And same thing is true for you. When you look around yourself, you're probably uh, able to see other people's patterns much better than they are themselves. Um, so get an accountability partner, uh, someone who has been in the legal profession for a long time, but who is very innovative at the same time, will be able to to guide you in the right direction. Uh, if you don't uh, currently have an accountability partner, reach out to me. Um, I usually charge for these as a coaching uh, professional, but not, not always. If you're not able to afford these things, I'm happy to be your accountability partner and help guide you to get to your dream. And once you get there, maybe you'll be my number one fan and I'll be your number one fan too. <laughs> Helen, thank you so much. Um, one other thing I just want to mention to everybody out there, um, you know, if, if you're trying to conserve funds, um, please reach out to us at LOMAP and LCL because we also do coaching. Um, and as you may or may not know, we also have three clinicians on staff uh, and we are free and we are confidential. So we are also here for you. Um, again, I want to thank you so much, Helen. This was such a terrific presentation. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Please uh, mark your calendars for April 29th. So at the end of this month, Allison Williams is going to be presenting on crushing chaos in law firms. So thanks again, Helen. Thanks again, everybody. Thank and have you. a terrific afternoon. Bye.